In this YouTube video, I'm going to provide you with the most useful resume tips and I will help you make this resume for a teaching position in Microsoft Word. It's a neat and professional resume that encourages hiring managers to read through. But if you prefer to save some time, then you might want to download some fancy matching resume and cover letter templates. Click on the link in the description for more information. First we need to adjust some basic settings. Let's start with the margins. Go to the layout tab. Click on the margins drop down menu. And pick the normal or narrow margin settings. I prefer the narrow settings for some extra space. And to make sure that the sensors won't be cropped, like you see in this video. By doing so, you maintain the readability of your document. Ok, next up I want to have a quick look at the style settings. So in the home tab, you will need to right mouse click here. Modify. And over here, at formatting, you can pick a formal font style, like Calibri. And pick between a 10 to 12 point font size for the body text. Uh, these settings are fine, so let's click on cancel and begin making the resume. Now we start with the header section, where we put our personal information. Let me include my name and surname first. After that we click on this icon to center it and press enter. Next up, I enter the city and state. Email, phone number and LinkedIn URL. Now we don't want this hyperlink, so let's remove it. Now to make our name stand out a bit more, I increase the font size by clicking on this A icon. I think 18 is fine, and then bold highlight it to finish it off. After that we want to structure the resume using sections. Let me add education, certificates, skills, experience, interests, and references in caps lock and also press enter twice after each keyword and bold highlight the first one. Now the sequence of these sections highly depends on the position you are after. If you are applying for a teaching assistant position, you most likely don't have a lot of work experience. In that case, you'd better start with an education and certificate section. A key here is to always put the best stuff above the fold. Next up we need to make these sections stand out. I highlight the first section and go to the line and paragraph spacing icon, line spacing options and adjust the spacing settings to 12 points before and 12 points after. Click on OK. Then we need to add some borders. Click on this little arrow icon and add top and bottom borders. Then we want to increase the font size. I suggest you stay in between the 13 and 16 point font size. I think 14 looks fine. Now we want to copy the formatting and apply it to our other sections. So highlight education and then click on this brush icon twice. And left click the other sections to apply the same styling. There we go. Now make sure to disable the formatting option. Ok let's add some content to our first section. Place the cursor right here and start with your educational background. So for example, the university name and the degree. Again, use some bold and cursive font style to finish it off. Then we include the city, state and date. Now we want to align these to the right and need this ruler to do so. Now if you don't see this option, you need to go to view tab and enable ruler. Now hover over to the cursor and left mouse click to place a tab index and press tab, then it will jump right there and you've added a left stop tab. Now if it's not properly aligned, you can click hold the left stop tab and move it accordingly. Ok, let me highlight this using bold and cursor style. Next up, I want to add some subcategories using bullet points. In the home tab you can add them by clicking on this icon, but I rather use the shift 8 space fast keys. All right. Let me add the educational background real fast. Then we arrive at the certification section, where you can add, for example, your state teacher's license or any supplementary private teaching certificates. But first, let's insert a table. Go to the Insert tab, click on the Table drop-down menu 
and pick a 3x1 table. Now by default, the margins of this table are not properly aligned. But you can easily solve this by going to the table layout, cell margins, and change the left and right windows to zero. There you go. All right, let me add some certificates. I would also recommend to, to add some sort of basic life support certification, if you have one at least. Show that you are certified to educate and have what it takes to look after students. Now once you've filled all the cells, you need to remove the borders. Select the whole table and go to the table design. Click the table drop down and select no borders. And there you go. Okay, that brings us to the skills section. And again, let's insert the table. Uh, let's insert a bullet point and categorize all the teaching qualifications. Now, I like to include a software tools category to show off my technical skills, but also some teaching principles that I possess and my proficiency with written and oral communication in different languages. Now that brings us to the experience section. Okay, so let's say you have some experience as a substitute teacher. Let me first add all the information. Try incorporating the PAR method, which stands for Problem Action Result. Now that way you bring impact and purpose to your experiences. The same goes for using action verbs at the beginning of each sentence, like called, prepared, and received. Now furthermore, do you notice how I quantified my experiences? Now, by quantifying your background, you inform the reader exactly about the impact you made. Okay, let me copy and paste the whole paragraph and move on to the interest section. Now, although this section is not a requirement, I would advise you to include it in your resume because it takes just a couple of words to show the human side behind the resume. Now that doesn't mean you should only add some commonly used keywords like reading, traveling or watching Netflix. No, try to make it a bit more so-called quirky. For example, if you like reading, add some book titles that inspired you. Another interest of mine, for example, is watching movies. So try to add some great movies related to teaching like Music of the Heart by Meryl Streep or School of Rock by Jack Black. Personally, I really like these movies and there is a big chance that the reader watched one of these as well. Anyway, see it like this. It's an opportunity to show your genuine interests but also relate to the reader's interests. Okay, as for the last part, you can add a reference section. Now again, this is not a requirement but if you have some satisfied ex-employers and some space left, then I would certainly recommend you add such information in your resume. But remember, you need to keep everything short, concise and to the point. Don't exceed the one page document. Lastly, I also want to emphasize the importance of properly sending your resume. If there are no employer's instructions on how to submit the resume, then the common rule of thumb is to email your document in a PDF format or a Word document attached to the email. Also, make sure to save your file accordingly. So name, surname, resume. That way, the employer will know that it is yours without even opening the document. Now, all these little things prove your attention to detail and can make the difference between getting hired or not. Okay, so before I end this video, I would like to know if you watched the whole video. And I'm even more curious if you got the teaching position. Leave an emoji with glasses if you watched the video till the end. And leave an emoji with sunglasses if you actually got the job. I want to thank you for watching and if you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll respond as soon as possible. If this video was helpful, then a like and subscribe is greatly appreciated. Thanks again for watching and see you next time. Bye!